first slide is going to give all the impression in the world. Now, Camp Rashabi, their problem is not the camp. Their problem is how they present themselves. Okay? Now, if you look at a typical presentation, they'll have a lot of kind of scrappy images and they'll have kind of cluttered text and they just don't come across well. Now, let's say you look at an Apple presentation. Well, you know, that's unreasonable. We can't make those. Wait, could we make an Apple presentation? Could our everyday presentations look that good? Presenting slide alive studios. Now, let me go into kind of a little bit generic of how, what the problem is, how we identified this. Now, we did a case study, and basically what we took, uh, did is we took a handful of people and we gave them some generic text, okay? Just a half page of text, and we said, okay, now let's see how long the construction of just the PowerPoint, now that they have this text, takes. So we wanted them to make, make eight slides. Each slide should have some text, a picture, a title. Now guess how long that took just to make eight slides. On average, it took 38 minutes. That's incredible. If you think just the construction, not anything else, not the planning, not the ideas, just the construction took 38 minutes. Wow. Let's kind of break that down. Let's see where that time is going, okay? So if you look, we have a few people in the 10 to 20 minute range, a few people, 40, 60, 90 minutes. Most everyone is in that 20 to 40 minutes. That's consistently how long people take to make just a short presentation. Now you're asking yourself, wow, so I just spent 40 minutes making this presentation. It must look really good, right? <laughs> Well, as you guys seen from presentations in the past, you end up with presentations looking like this. Okay? It was like, oh my goodness, I am just dying here. All right, so you got a whole, any of those today. You get a whole bunch of text, and you're just like, ah. All right, let's see another example. So this one, he is just throwing graphics at you. Where do I look? I don't know. Okay, it's overwhelming. All right, let's see one more example. So. <clears throat> Boring generic title. I am writing down everything I could possibly say. You've had that person who just looks at the slide and just reads everything. Okay? We're trying to break that. So I'm going to bring up Paul, and he's going to tell you, okay, we have this problem. Now, how are we going to solve it? Paul's going to get a little bit more into that. Thanks, Dan. So what is Slide Alive? Well, first off, it's an app. And it uses voice recognition technology to provide beautiful, clean, clear, crisp presentations faster than you've ever seen before. And best of all, it's all based in the cloud. So that's great, but how does it work? We have a demo here to show you. I'm gonna walk you through that in just a second. So as we start the app, we're prompted to begin, relatively simple. So let's begin. So it'll start up. And now let's listen. So I can say something like, startups are based on a foundation of strong teamwork. And it'll think for a second, but ultimately, and in just a few seconds, it'll return all of this. And what, what everything is here, let me just walk you through. So just by speaking my presentation, I'm now given a transcript of what I said that I can review, I can change the words on, tweak. I'm given the audio of what I said so I can review it, learn, practice, and also, I'm given automatic picture recommendations based on what I said. So as you can see here, strong teamwork is a suggested, or well, I said strong teamwork, and a suggested photo of, of course, a picture of our team. <laughs> so as you can see, it's relatively straightforward. By the way, we use the Tinder model. So if you like a picture, you swipe right. If you don't like a picture, you swipe left, it's gone forever, right? So you just walk it through as you listen to that audio playback, and then we move on to the next part of the presentation, which, once again, you walk through one more time, and you can choose to add text, change that picture if you change your mind, or add data from sources like Wolfram Alpha. So for an example, I had the word success to this slide. Simple, clean, beautiful, effective. Like what you see at TEDx or in Apple Keynotes. So I'm all done. I've walked through my slides. They're generated. I automatically now have slides hosted online at the website URL that's given to me. I can pull them up on any computer and give my presentation. Simple as that. Just to show you a little more, you know, here's an example of uh, the slides that you might have, and then also here's a little menu bar. So there's the general app outlay. 
Uh, and from that, I'm going to go into what I call the minimum viable presentation test. So, what we're really trying to stress is our speed compared to our effectiveness. We want the user to input less time to get a more effective presentation. So we can look, uh, you can see this is PowerPoint here, this is the keynote, uh, Google Slides, and Prezi over there. You know, some of them can be a little bit effective, that's all right, you know, but all of them use the same general generation of slide technique. And generally, you're gonna spend a good amount of time for really not that effective results, especially if you're not a design student. On the other hand, we sit up here at the top right, and you can see our comfortable buffer, where we are more effective with less time. But that'll give it over to Scott. Hi guys, my name is Scott Hartman. I've been handling most of the business operations here within our Slide Alive team. So I want to break down our target market. So if you think back to the time where you had the biggest problem with your presentations, the time where you had trouble getting the information out of your head and onto the slideshow, I'm sure you think back to your pit grade class. You're stumbling on your words, you couldn't quite find the pictures and the messages, you started looking to the screen and reading the word for word messages that you put up there. So. The largest segment of our target market will be students. And after our market research, it amounted to over 60% of our target market. The nice thing about that is that students will one day be the entrepreneurs, educators, and in the corporate setting to bring our product all the way up to the top. And that brings us to our next segment of our target market was entrepreneurs, business minds like yourselves, and then teachers, educators, who really just wanna get visual implementations to grab the students' attention while they're sleeping in the back of the classroom. Now we can go to the next slide. I'll go into our revenue streams. So to start off with our um, service that we have here with Slide Alive, we really want to build traffic. So before we go to this freemium model, we just want to get as many users as possible and we'll have the basic version free without ads. But after that and after we build our target market that we were trying to get, we're going to have a basic version free with ads and limited features, a premium version, which would be $6 a month with added features, and then a team premium. The team premium will be essentially the ability to have multiple smartphone devices as your clicker, your Tinder model, for different members of your team. So you can, you can uh, express your ideas simultaneously in a group setting, and that will be at $10 a month for you. A little bit about our costs. Since we have the development power within our team, we will not have to export or send out any of our tasks to other developers, making our costs relatively small. This will comprise of our hosting fee, as well as the marketing and promotions, which we will tackle once we get seed funding. I'm gonna hand it back to Paul to tell you what this slide of live features could look like in the future. Thanks. Oh, real quickly, our goals. So we want to fully develop our app. We want to begin locally, test our market, put our feet in the water, uh, use social media to spread the word as Scott, Scott, Scott already talked about a little bit, and potentially enter accelerator programs like this. Uh, so future plans. I just want to put this out there really quickly because I get really excited about what something could be. Online editing, your templates generated, you can go automatically into your online interface, you can make edits, you can do it from your smartphone, oh, smartphone. Seamless editing all around. Other features, uploading existing presentations. Those presentations that look terrible, we can take those too. Treat them as if they were audio that was spoken. Give them a beautiful makeover. Things like that. Imagine other features, maybe I can give a speech impromptu and it automatically generates pictures to go with it. And maybe even music in the background, things like that. Added themes, so much to do. Exporting to other uh, platforms such as Google Docs or PowerPoints if users prefer that. Finally, our team consists of Vice President of Minnesota State Entrepreneurship Club as well as a Chief Financial Officer of a local nonprofit. And between everyone, we have over 45 years in coding experience. That includes uh, Ron and Ben in addition, um, who are both part of our teams. So Ron's in the picture here. So with that, we'll go over to the proof of concept, I think. Mm. Yellowstone National Park is located primarily in the U.S. state of Wyoming, 
although it extends into Montana and Idaho. It was established by the U.S. Congress and signed into law by President Ulysses S. Grant. So that's just a quick example. I'll let it run for a little bit longer, but you can see how effective it might be. So now that we've seen a little bit about this, I'd like to point out that the technology that you've used for the last 10 years isn't going to be the technology you use for the next 10 years. Now, let's get on something great. Let's make something beautiful, and let's make it faster. Slide away. Thank you. All right. Well done. Well presented, guys. Um, let me ask you about the images. So are those, um, you know, can I use, like, like, you had a picture of your team. Where is it pulling the images, or can I pull images from my, like, my camera? Great question. We actually did that a good amount. Um, so, uh, right now, the demo that you saw pulls from Google Images. Uh, that was the most seamless to get to work. Mm -hmm. However, ideally in the future, we pull from Flickr, because not only does it have the ability uh, to prevent images that you don't have like a license to use, right? But it also has a lot, and I mean a lot, of beautiful high resolution, high resolution pictures. That's almost exclusively uh, what Flickr's for. So that would be ideally in the future. Um, I do have one thing to add to that too, is to start, if you imagine the whole presentation market, we're not looking at the whole presentation market just yet. We're starting with just a slice of that, and that slice is kind of these kind of picture-friendly presentations that people show, kind of like this camp wasabi. Like, you, you're a summer camp director, or let's say you're a student and you have to present on a chapter. Some of those things are gonna be more effective for this type of presentation. So that's initially where our, we're focusing our gaze, but like Paul was saying, you know, we could have features we could drag and drop, and th there's a lot to be done. Yeah, we've also heard suggestions to, like, you know, custom user databases. Of course, we'd allow a user to use their own photo. Uh, in addition to that, there's the potential in the future to build up our own database of images that we kind of have more control over. Uh, that would be later, but it would probably be beneficial to us. And as far as like, um, so you'll have like a series of templates, like let's just say I'm starting from scratch and I start you know, talking it through. How do I, is there some process ahead of time, I think maybe you touched upon this, where it's kind of um, like, if you have to say, you know, it could look like this, but it could, have a completely different design to it? How does it determine, do I input some information from like, this is the kind of mood that I'm going for, or this is like, I want something corporate versus I want something, you know, more fun, or how does that, how does that happen? Or how will that happen? Yeah, yeah, we've thought about this a bit. Um, kind of what we're thinking right now is what you touched on is kind of themes. You know, as you go through the presentation, uh, kind of as you talk and stuff, things will be split up and categorized, okay? so you could have a title slide and that's gonna look different across the different themes. And then, you know, you might wanna choose a fun theme or you might wanna choose a more corporate theme like you were talking about. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, maybe have it automatically predict which theme you might like best based on how you're speaking. Or just simply the user could determine that prior to starting the process. So it's kind of analogous to like, you know, I wanna go with website. So, you know, I, I go and I try to find and there's obviously like successful tools out there to do this, to do that. And this is kind of, you know, similar, but like more interesting because you've got the voice recognition piece to it and you are making it even less complicated because I don't have to type anything, I don't have to worry about like, how am I gonna format this with bullet points? Mm -hmm. So no, I, really, I mean, I actually really like this right. idea. Right. Um, so tell me where you are just in terms of like product development and what, and what your, timelines look like, what your, what your product roadmap kind of looks like. Uh, yeah, so we have Ron, and he is our, um, he's, he's, he's 50 or so, and he's been developing for 30 some years. He just finished a project, so we're gonna touch base with him and just kind of see where he is. Paul, I know, uh, is taking a trip to China, and then he has the whole summer available. Scott has the whole summer available. He's looking to do something. Um, I have a job as a software developer, but I'm ready to do things weekend, outside of that, evenings. Um, We're primarily like looking at mapping it out right after this meeting, to be honest. 
Okay, good. Because yeah. I guess that's you haven't yet. Yeah. But that's it, yeah, that would be yeah, kind of those are next steps. Yeah, because I think it can I think it can be a big idea. I, I, if you do need to um, yeah, think through some of those like, all right, well what you know, what would this look like in five years? And yeah. you know, what like if I'm looking at the next how we're spending the next year, you know, what would we what should we be focusing on? You know, what features are we you know, who we need to hire? And then of course it gets into like do you need to raise money or how much money do you need to raise? Like there's Kind of that, you know, um, that you can, like I think it's very, you know, you get attention obviously um, with you know, the clean design and it's like cool in the demo and it's, you know, you, you think, gosh, yeah, it really does suck when you have to create a presentation. Even if you, you know, even if you're starting with a template, it's still, you know, in PowerPoint or whatever, it's like, you, you don't always want to use the same template and it kind of gets old after you've seen the same one, you know, you've presented using the same you know, two or three times. So, um, so I think it's I, I think it's a really interesting idea. I was just uh, yeah, no, um, kind of, you know, well done and kind of it's it's um it's interesting that you kind of thought of, you thought that piece through, but you yeah now it's kind of like more practical. Like all right, here's how we actually you know, would would go to market. Here's here's what our product development schedule looks like. We want to you know, release this you know beginning at yeah. this point. Um, and that's gonna that's gonna you know make you yeah. seem like okay you like you have thought through thought yeah. thought some you know, sweat yeah. some of the details and that's where I plug the founders. <laughs> that's, exactly, yeah. that's a really important so, aspect of the business planning process, like you said, having milestones, projections that you can actually measure, and being able to meet those milestones to get to your end goal. Yeah, yeah, but at the same time, like that's what I'm ready for. Scott and I drove down from Minnesota actually last mm -hmm. night, and. These, this is the kind of opportunity we're looking for, you know, where we can start pushing ourselves into this and making those plans and exactly what you're saying. Got it. Cool. Cool. No, I, I think it's uh, it's very cool. And you obviously have a good design aesthetic too. You know, that's which, awesome. I would expect, He's got a good eye. I would expect <laughs> from a company that's that's helping, you know, get rid of the bad like clip art, you know, from from the nineties or whatever. But uh, but <laughs> it's really um, <laughs> It's, I, you know, I like it. Good. Thank yeah, so you. keep work, keep working on it. Keep working on it. And spend spend the time to kind of think about taking it from you know the product idea to like to the you know business how plan. you build out a business around this. Yeah. Good stuff. Can I ask a quick comment? Yes. Yeah, sure. I'm just curious uh, if, for future reference, uh, the online courses that are offered do cover Delaware. Uh, could you just elaborate a little bit on exactly what those might cover? Yeah, so we um, we focus on eight dimensions of, of building a company. So you know, the, the first one is kind of the idea, and you know, typically um, people come to us with an idea, but you know, we may help them think about you know, maybe broaden it a little bit, or you know, how can this be bigger? I mean, yeah, that, you know, this thing could be a little niche, but this could really be you know much more interesting. Mm -hmm. um, building out a team, so how do you hire um, any players? How do you? I mean, can we already from like they really do reference call, like a bad hire is really expensive, it can be really bad for an early stage startup that has you know, a small number of people, so kind of bringing in the wrong fit. Um, so we help with, with that, um, that's typically something that we start off with at the beginning of the semester. Um, go to market strategies, who should be targeting, um, business planning fees, how do you price it, um, uh, you know, how, how big of a market is this, um, you know, who do you need to hire and when and how much do things cost? And you know, if you're trying to raise money, determining how much money you'll really need. Um, and then you know, also trying to figure out what's attractive to you and how to kind of package. So fundraising is obviously a big piece of what we focus on as well. Because like I said, most of our companies are gonna be either either actively fundraising or they're gonna be, you know, you need to do it soon. So how do you pitch to investors? How do you um, you know, how do you fill all those elements in? Um, I think the eight, eight dimensions actually. Uh, so the operation side of things, um, you know, how much process is your company's growing? How much process do you need? What do you need to be thinking about kind of on the infrastructure side? Um, sales, you know, ch channel development, um, Again, how do you price? What, what kind of people do you need on your sales team? So each of us, 
has kind of our own area of expertise, and we're bringing in more mentors as well this year um, to, to work with, uh, with all the companies. So it's really like, it's not nothing theoretical, it's very much real, you know, real world, like you're building your company as you're, you know, <clears throat> doing the program, right? That's cool. Yeah. That's cool. So are we just in time then? Um, just a side note, are there any internship opportunities under those mentors for the business development process? Um, you know what, so we don't have internships. Yeah. Um, we, we do have an associates program, actually, okay. which is like for people who want to work with us and help uh, spread the, the founder.org brand in, um, on campus. Yeah. So that's something, are you you're a current student? Are you a current student? I'm just okay. interested. Okay, got it. Got it, got it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but um, yeah, we don't have any interns like that are working with with Founder by Work specifically. Um, but it's something that actually we probably should consider at some point. Yeah. Well, Chris, I appreciate your time. Thank, thank you so you much. Thank you for driving down. I don't know yeah,